In Phantom Forces, loadouts can pretty much be anything with the wide variety of gun combinations you can use. You can do anything from assault rifles combined with pistols or shotguns combined with revolvers or even combine two of the same type of guns such as shotgun and shotgun or sniper and sniper. But with the amount of combinations you can actually make into a loadout, a question rises. What exactly makes a good loadout? Well that's what I'm here to tell you today, so strap yourselves in folks because it's time for a deep dive. Now of course, when talking about loadouts, your primary is what comes first. A primary should be strong for the current map you're playing on. For example, if you're playing on a pretty all-route map like Crane Sight, you want to choose a gun like the Honey Badger, a gun that is pretty good performance all around. See, choosing your primary based on the map you're playing on is optimizing your loadout for best possible performance. But simply choosing your weapon is leaving out the biggest part of optimizing, which is of course attachments. Attachments can single-handedly change how your gun performs, whether you want to completely ruin the gun or optimize it for a certain playstyle. Take the C7A2 as an example. The C7A2 is a Canadian assault rifle with a high rate of fire and above average muzzle velocity. By default, this gun is built for long range and has access to multiple attachments that actually help improve the gun to optimize the long range performance this gun was built for. However, that's where conversions come into the picture. Conversions in Phantom Forces usually drastically change what the gun's best performance is. Coming back to the C7A2, we can see it has access to two different conversions. The .45 conversion and 7.62 conversion. Both conversions are focusing on turning the C7A2's main long-range intent into a more CQC kind of style. The C7A2 has access to attachments that optimize the close-range power that the .45 conversion offers. See, by pairing your C7A2 with a short barrel and a stubby grip, the horizontal recoil that most PDWs struggle with is dampened and the short barrel increases the C7A2's overall speed but also maximum damage range, therefore optimizing the low damage range that the .45 conversion has and making yourself a more mobile target. And with the 7.62 conversion, focusing on dampening the higher recoil with a compensator and folding grip plus a full stock can help you control that power and become a threat at both close range but also in medium range. With all of this customization that Phantom Forces offers, you can single-handedly completely change what your gun of choice was meant for and optimize it for the role you wanted to fulfill. But if you're optimizing your gun for certain ranges, for example long range, what do you do when you get caught in close range? So let's continue with our C7A2 example. You've just finished optimizing it for long range with a long barrel for faster bullet speed and full stock to dampen the recoil plus a stubby grip to stop the gun from swaying from side to side. But what do you do when you and your long ranged focused gun gets caught in close range combat? Well that's where secondaries come into the picture. See, secondaries are primarily meant for backup in the situation where you're out of ammo or have a bad gun for close range combat. But more importantly, a secondary should cover the downside your primary has. This is why choosing your secondary based on the primary you're using is how to optimize play and create a balance. A good loadout in my experience is a loadout that can cover all ranges making you a big threat to any enemy that crosses your path. So I'll give you a few examples of secondaries that pair well with differently ranged weapons. So close range centered weapons such as the Colt SMG or literally any shotgun, with a few exceptions of course, are lacking ranged performance. Which is where there are a few options. One is both of the Deagles, specifically with extended barrels. These can actually be a great utility to be able to take out enemies at medium to long range. But I would be damned if I didn't mention the sniper secondaries, also known as the SFG and the Obras. These two are by far the best ranged secondaries in the game, with the SFG being a fantastic mid-ranged weapon, while the Obras is basically your pocket Mosin. And while it's more difficult to use it since its body shot damage isn't all that impressive, if you can hit your headshots with this thing, it will be one of the best long range backup weapons you'll ever use. But next we're going to talk about ranged weapons such as the Scar L and L85A2, which are guns that foreshot all ranges. These guns with their low recoil and damage are fantastic ranged weapons, but the problem is they kinda lack performance in close range, which is where your secondary should come in to save you. Now there are a few pistols out there that are great for close range combat, but I'm largely going to focus on machine pistols as naturally automatic weapons are easier to use than semi-automatic. A fan favorite is the Tech 9 and granted it does its job well, but the problem is it runs out of ammo fairly quickly and it's hard to kill multiple people with it. A really solid pick is the Glock 18, specifically with extended mag and Glock stock. 
The Glock with its vector-like fire rate can easily shred through an enemy, alongside having 33 bullets with the extended mag meaning you can easily kill a lot of enemies in close range without having to worry about reloading. But there comes a time where you run out of ammo and there are still enemies nearby, which is where you probably pull out your last resort. Now melees are mostly used for getting stealth kills like backstabbing unsuspecting snipers on Desert Storm, but they are also a last resort in a gunfight. See, in the rare case where you run out of ammo during a gunfight, your melee is pretty much the only thing between you and death. Now unlike other first person shooter games like Arsenal where the melees are just reskins with no statistical changes, melees in Phantom Forces actually have drastically different stats compared to one another. See, there are some knives in Phantom Forces that have questionable backstab hitboxes, and exploiting those questionable hitboxes to get an instant kill backstab is very useful when you're out of ammo or low on health. These questionable hitboxes are quite common with one-hand blades, or more commonly known as knives. A few knives with exploitable hitboxes I can name are the Havoc Blade and the Karambit. But melees also have a universally known purpose present in most first-person shooters. Movement Speed In Phantom Forces, movement is very important, and there are two categories of melee weapons that are relatively light, allowing for faster travel, however, I want to focus on a specific one here, the Brass Knuckle. The Brass Knuckle is a pretty abysmal melee, dealing only 50 damage to the torso and lacking a backstab hitbox. But the reason I'm mentioning this specifically is because it has the fastest running speed out of all the melees, meaning it is the ideal melee to use for faster travel across the map. See, LMGs and Phantom Forces are pretty slow, which makes positioning and overall movement pretty hard to do and also very slow. Which brings me back to my previous point. But more importantly, it's like the other weapon slots and a loadout should cover weaknesses your primary suffers from, and that's why I mentioned the Brass Knuckle. For example, pairing an LMG with a sniper-like secondary and a fast melee creates a very balanced but still extremely powerful loadout. Let me further explain. A powerful close-range LMG like the RPK combined with the SFG for range coverage and the brass knuckle to cover for the lack of speed creates a very balanced yet versatile and still powerful loadout. So in conclusion, I believe a good loadout is a combination of guns and other weapons that create a balance. A combination of guns that can cover all ranges allowing for high versatility and optimized performance. A strong primary focused and optimized for one range with a secondary and melee as coverage for what your primary lacks. And well that's about it for this video. If you found it useful then make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Also, just keep in mind that this video was made for the purpose of improving loadouts, so these tips and tricks aren't a must-do, but rather a choice you could take. If you like the weapons you use, that's fine, I'm just stating my opinion on what an optimal and performance-ready loadout is. But until next time, peace.